our trust in your Son, whom you raised from the dead. Strengthen our faith that all who have died in the love of Christ will share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading is taken from the, chap uh, from the Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How could we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Here ends the reading. The effect of her being on those around her was incalculably diffusive. For the growing good of the world is partly dependent on unhistoric acts, and that things are not so ill with you and me as they might have been, is half owing to the number who lived faithfully a hidden life and rest in unvisited tombs. Mum's life. However, 
Their bond was strong and he remained a huge influence throughout her life, instilling a sense of duty and loyalty that made Mum such a good friend and sister. When Mum was seven, her father was posted to Singapore. She and her mother followed by cargo boat, a voyage that took many weeks. After the austerity of post-war Britain, Mum said Singapore felt like paradise. Tropical fruits, exotic flowers, short school days, and carefree weekends at the beach. After four happy years, the family returned to England, and Mum spent a while boarding at Kingsley Girls' School in Leamington's Bar, where she made lifelong friends. Her parents finally settled in army quarters at Nell Hall in Whitton, and Mum joined Lady Eleanor Holly School in Hampton, where she met her close friends Joe, Sheila, and Lynn Conver, who little did Mum know would one day become her sister in law. Lynn's brother Barry was at the boys' school next door. He and Mum spotted each other on the trolley bus to school and were soon attending the school's weekly boring dancing classes in Twickenham and Twickenham Young Liberals together. It was the swinging 60s and there was the excitement of coffee bars and record shops in nearby Richmond, later immortalised in the book and film An Education, written by Mum's classmates, the journalist William Barber. Mum studied hard, filling her biology and geography books with beautifully crafted field notes that we still enjoy today. University beckoned and Mum went to study botany at Exeter, where she embraced academic life and explored the British arts on intrepid field courses. Mum's college friends always say what fun she was to be with, carefree and full of life. Many still visualise her sat on tuppets in the rain, identifying plant species, and her never ending searching for the rare stinky hellebore for her famous A to Z collection of press flowers, which she eventually tracked down on the northwest coast of Ireland. Soon after she graduated, Dad popped the question and they married, honeymooning on the South Devon coast where more recently we enjoyed final family holidays together. Mum embarked on a career in electron microscopy, working for Unilever and the paint research laboratory until my brother and I came along, really interrupting her plans. Mum was a wonderful wife and mother constant, kind, and caring, and always putting herself, um, always putting her others first before herself. In 1972, my parents moved here to West Byfleet, and it was at the school gates and on the PTA, where mum made many of her closest friends, some of whom she continued to meet weekly over coffee for 50 years, until just a few months ago, including Jan, Jenny, Judy and Kay to this day. Perhaps it was because Mum was an only child, or because she'd moved around so much, she had an incredible ability to sustain her friendships over the years, no matter how many miles or years separated them. She was a prolific letter writer and never forgot a birthday. As a child, I remember her sitting down every few weeks every few days, but sorry, to write long letters to her parents and far-flung friends. One of Mum's best friends remembers receiving a card from her right after I was born saying, have a good girl half an hour ago, feeling fighting fit. In the mid-70s, my parents joined St John's Church and Mum became firm friends with young Fanny Cross. Their friendship provided Mum much comfort in her final weeks. Over the years, Mum always enjoyed reading the lesson at church on Sundays and being involved in church life, helping with teas and church dates. Once my brother and I started school, Mum helped run Priscilla Whitehead's playgroup in Perford. Then in the 80s, Mum joined the vibrant team running West Whitehead's bookcase, later Corbett's book shop, a role she'd enjoyed for almost 20 years. A great reader, Mum loved opening boxes of the latest bestsellers, helping organise textbooks for the local schools, 
and being at the hub of West Byfleet's community. At weekends, one would take us off exploring the Surrey Hills and Northern Downs. We have happy memories of country walks, mum always on the lookout for a rare orchid or reeling off Latin names for the plants we passed. Of summers on the Suffolk coast, bird watching with my grandfather, and of fun packed family gatherings with our cousins and paternal grandparents. My mum, aunt, and grandmother cooking up endless supplies of delicious food amid the chaos. Mum was a nervous flyer, but she and dad still managed trips to Scottish islands, Norwegian fjords, up to Scilly and Guernsey. They also loved visiting my brother Anthony as his career took him from Aberystwyth and Aberdeen to the Lake District and York. Once mum and dad retired, they were regular visitors at mum's beloved Ruthie Gardens and National Trust properties, as well as London's art galleries and theatres. In her final year, mum's strength really came to the fore. Always positive and never complaining, she took everything in her stride, and even in hospital, she was always more concerned with her fellow patients and medical staff than herself. It was mum's strong friendships, family, faith and nature that sustained her. In her final days, we can live happy memories and take imaginary walks in some of her favourite places. We miss mum's wonderful presence, but we only have to step out into nature to fill her with us and to know that she is at peace.
That reading from St John begins with the phrase, do not let your hearts be troubled. But they are troubled, I imagine, anyway. And they should be. We have lost a dear wife, mother, friend, a lovely, loving, intelligent, accomplished person. And as is often the case on occasions like this, it's only now that I've discovered things about somebody that I've had the opportunity to talk to for three or four years. I did not know anything about, really, about Julia's interest in nature and her scientific appreciation of it and other things. And I'm sorry I didn't know, but I'm deeply impressed. But it's not just the loss of a wonderful person that disturbs us. Death itself troubles us. I think we need to understand when it says, do not let your hearts be troubled, that Jesus does not mean, do not grieve or do not be sad. He means something more like, do not be afraid. Do not be disturbed. That is, do not be disturbed by the darker aspects and possibilities of life. And in the face of such disturbance, we are to trust in God. Now in this passage, the context is that Jesus is preparing his disciples for his own imminent death. He's telling them it won't be in vain. He is gone, he is going to forge a path, to claim a destiny which is his and theirs together, and that he will return for them. And they are to trust in that, and they are to trust in him. And he says the same to us in the face of loss. So, we are sad but we may be confident about Julia's destiny. She is beloved of God, no less than of us, and more than she is beloved of us, and assured of a special, unique place in his house. And we will be bereft but we need not be anxious about the fact of death or indeed of other bad or evil things in the world. What Christ says to us is that he is with us, God is with us, he has conquered death and he shows the way to life and to life beyond death and through pain and difficulty and loss. He shows us that way and he accompanies us, accompanies us on the way. And so we will grieve, we will be sad, but we need not be troubled in the sense of disturbed or afraid. Let us pray. In response to the phrase, Lord, in your mercy, will you please respond, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, Lord of life, you have made us in your image. To reflect your truth and light. We give you thanks for Julia, for the grace and mercy she received from you, for all that was good in her life, for the memories we treasure today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You promised eternal life to those who believe. Remember for good this your servant Julia, as we also remember her. 
Bring all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your kingdom, where sins have been forgiven and death is no more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your mighty power brings joy out of grief and life out of death. Look in mercy on Barry and Mary and Anthony and all who mourn. Give them patient faith in times of darkness. Strengthen them with the knowledge of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are tender towards your children, and your mercy is over all your works. Heal the memories of hurt and failure. Give us the wisdom and grace to use aright the time that is left to us here on earth. To turn to Christ and follow in his steps, in the way that leads to everlasting life. God of mercy, entrusting into your hands all that you have made, and rejoicing in our communion with all your faithful people, we make our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And now please join with me in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we stand to sing our second and final hymn, How Great Thou Art.
Please remain standing for the prayer of commendation and farewell. Let us commend Julia to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. God, our Creator and Redeemer, by your power Christ conquered death and entered into glory, confident of his victory and claiming his promises, we entrust Julia to your mercy. In the name of Jesus our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you, now and forever. Amen. May God, in his infinite love and mercy, bring the whole church, living and departed in the Lord Jesus, to a joyful resurrection and the fulfilment of his eternal kingdom. Amen.